Mr. Sucker said, quote, it's about promoting themselves and promoting foreign and security policies, and in some cases, worldviews that justify their continued existence and massive budget. Speaking of which, the Democrats just voted to, to increase the Pentagon's budget and the military budget. glaring political issues. You don't want class conscious, politically literate, and critically thinking citizens. You want an audience. Just relax and enjoy the show. Theodore Adorno and Max Horkenheimer write about this in the culture industry. The US government heavily influences the entertainment industry as researchers Thomas Secker and Dr. Matthew Alford from the University of Bath explore in their book, National Security Cinema. They found the CIA and Department of Defense made changes to film scripts, production assistant agreements signed between military officials and film producers, and internal government communications regarding the entertainment industry in over, in over 4,000 documents obtained under the Freedom of Information Act. Researchers. Thomas Secker and Dr. Alford found that the CIA and Department of Defense made changes to film scripts, production assistant agreements signed between military officials and film producers, and internal documents production assistant agreements signed between military officials and film producers and internal government communications regarding the entertainment. The government has entertainment liaison offices which assure that federal agencies are portrayed in a favorable light, i.e. superheroes that help the government beat the bad guys, romanticizing the surveillance state, justifying warmongering and imperialism and patriotism. In some cases, these relationships between the government and the film industry begin with producers approaching. The government is happy to oblige as long as they have say in the film's content. Tony Stark, the friendly, charismatic, and charming defense contractor, Captain America, the World War II vet, who is also a desegregationist, and every World War II movie that shows American soldiers fighting fascism abroad only to return home and enjoy a milkshake at a segregated diner. Examples of this hypernationalism, jingoism, and imperialism in modern film would be Tony Stark, the friendly and charismatic defense contractor, Captain America, the World War II vet, who was also a desegregationist. Every World War II movie that, that shows American soldiers fighting fascism abroad only to return home and enjoy a milkshake at a segregated diner. Mr. Secker said, quote, it's about promoting themselves and promoting foreign and security policies, and in some cases, worldviews that justify their continued existence and massive budget. Speaking of which, the Democrats just voted to, to increase the Pentagon's budget 
and the military budget. So for everyone who voted for Biden, are you happy that he's funding apartheid in uh, Palestine? Are you happy that he is um, fueling imperialism and banning fascism across the globe? We have bombed Somalia and America and AFRICOM continues to operate in Africa um, undermining the democratic processes of hundreds of countries to align with uh, the elites, economic elites. Since 2005, the Pentagon has been involved in Cupcake Wars, American Idol, and Top Chef. Mr. Secker continues, the approach seems to be almost anything can be used to promote U.S. security state. Secker continues, the approach seems to be almost anything can be used to promote the U.S. security state, its ideology and objectives. They're trying to reach out to audiences beyond their usual young men who see war or action movies. The script changes include the 2000 movie Tears of the Sun about a fictional Navy SEAL and a rescue operation in Nigeria. It was heavily edited to get rid of the impression that the government has had a hand in regime change and puppet governments. Workers in Bessemer, Alabama are voting to organize their workplace at Amazon. The corporation expanded their workforce from 800,000 to 1.2 million during the last year, making 125 billion in the last quarter. The National Labor Relations Board mailed out ballots on February 8th to over 5,000 Amazon workers to join the retail, wholesale, and department store union. If you go to the bathroom at the Bessemer warehouse, inside the stall, you would see anti-union posters discouraging you from organizing. And they have found that um, in Bessemer, Alabama, after workers uh, voted on whether to unionize, and uh, the decision was not to unionize, that there was um, influence by Amazon to um, alter the outcome of the election. So while well, CNN and NSNBC and NBC and all the major news stations will continue to tell you that America is the beacon of freedom and home of democracy, we are the pillar of humanitarian rights. Um, we have propaganda being fed to us, not just by the mainstream media, but also by Hollywood, who is heavily um, manipulated by the U.S. government. Um, but you'll, you know, you'll see these celebrities doing fundraisers and um, talking about why they care about um, the average person's problems, from COVID to access to health care. They want you to vote. Um, but does democracy actually exist in America? I would not argue that America is a democracy. Um, look at the income of Joe Biden and Trump, Hillary Clinton and the Obamas. Look at how many homes they own, their property, their assets, and ask you if landowners would be interested in a rent moratorium or free housing. They align with their class interests and align with people who are elites.